When Ukraine became an independent nation in 1991, in the wake of the dissolution of the Soviet Union, it found itself in the position of being a nuclear armed state with conventional strategic strike capabilities as well, owing to the particular Soviet forces that it inherited. However, holding one third of the Soviet Union's nuclear weapons, as well as the means of designing and producing them, did not sit well with the West. The United States in particular was keen that Ukraine and all other former Soviet republics that had inherited nuclear weapons give them up, as part of the 1994 Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, Russia being the only post-Soviet nation to retain a nuclear deterrent. In due course, 1,700 Ukrainian warheads were scrapped. Obviously, some commentators have raised the obvious point in light of recent ongoing events that the present war would never have occurred if Ukraine had remained a nuclear power. But there is also the counter-argument that Ukraine couldn't afford to maintain such a force, which was one of the reasons why such nations were persuaded to give them up. However, Ukraine also lost, as part of its denuclearization, its strategic bomber capability that it also inherited from the USSR, used to deliver both nuclear and conventional cruise missiles and bombs onto long-range targets on land and at sea. Ukraine initially operated three Cold War bomber types that would have proven useful in the present conflict. Ukraine used to possess 60 Tupolev Tu-22M backfire bombers, 17 of the Tu-22M2 variant and 43 Tu-22M3s, along with 423 KH-22 cruise missiles. Tupolev Tu-22 entered Soviet service in 1972 and is a supersonic, variable sweep-wing, long-range strategic and maritime strike bomber. The Soviets used them primarily to attack shipping at long range, and today the Russian Air Force still has about 70 in service. The Russians have used them offensively. They have performed air strikes in Chechnya in 1995 and during the 2008 Russo-Georgian War, one aircraft being shot down by a ground-based missile. In 2013, backfires conducted a simulated attack on Sweden, the Swedish Air Force failing to respond, and subsequently have flown several more nuisance missions around Sweden. In Syria in 2015-17, backfires made many attacks, firing air-launched cruise missiles from the Mediterranean or actually flying bomber raids from Iran. Still a very capable plane, the airframes have been progressively modernized and updated. The Tu-22M3 version of the backfire has a crew of four, with a maximum speed of just under 2,000 km an hour or 1,241 miles per hour, Mach 1.88, with a typical load combat radius of 2,500 kilometers or 1,600 miles, hauling 10 tons of ordnance. It can carry up to 24 tons of ordnance, from cruise missiles to sea mines and various freefall bombs. The Ukrainian Air Force operated the type between 1991 and 2006 until under the terms of the Nun Luger Cooperative Threat Reduction, named after the two US senators behind this legislation, the aircraft and all their cruise missiles were scrapped, the last in January 2006. Four aircraft survive today as museum examples in Ukraine. The KH-22 cruise missiles, Ukraine scrapping all 423 on strength, is a large, long-range cruise missile produced since 1962. It has an effective range of 600 kilometers or 320 nautical miles at Mach 4.6, delivering a 1,000 kilo or 2,200 pound warhead. If Ukraine had retained these aircraft and missiles, perhaps Russia's Black Sea Fleet would have been unable to operate close inshore as it has been doing of late off the coast of Ukraine. Perhaps. 
Russia retains the backfire as it has long-range maritime strike capabilities. The second strategic bomber type the Ukrainians gave up was the Tupolev Tu-160 Blackjack. Called the White Swan by Soviet crews, it's another supersonic variable sweep wing heavy strategic bomber that first entered service in 1987. As I mentioned in a previous video, Russia currently has 16 updated versions in service with 10 more on order. The Blackjack is a large aircraft with a crew of four. It's the fastest bomber currently in service anywhere in the world, with a top speed of 2,220 kilometers an hour, or 1,380 miles per hour, that is Mach 2.05. It has a practical range without in-flight refueling of 2,000 kilometers, or 1,200 miles, and can carry 45 tons of ordnance, primarily 12 KH-55 cruise missiles. The Ukrainian Air Force inherited 19 blackjacks in 1991, which considering only 39 have so far been built, was an impressive force. But as per the Nun Luger Agreement, in 1999 Ukraine gave eight of the best airframes to Russia in exchange for gas debt relief, and the remainder, bar one in the Museum of Long Range and Strategic Aviation in Poltava, Ukraine, were scrapped. The agreement between Russia and Ukraine saw Russia purchase not only eight blackjacks and three Tupolev 95 Bear bombers, but Ukraine's entire stock of 575 KH-55 SM cruise missiles for $285 million, this value being deducted from Ukraine's debt for natural gas. It is not beyond the realms of possibility that ex-Ukrainian Air Force blackjacks and missiles have subsequently been used by Russia against Ukraine in the 2022 war. For example, Russian blackjacks launched cruise missiles at the Ukrainian city of Vinnytsia in April. If Ukraine still had a force of modernized blackjacks, it would have been able to attack, using cruise missiles, targets deep inside Russia, helping to further retard Russia's offensive capabilities. Or put another way, if Ukraine still had blackjacks and backfires and their accompanying cruise missiles, they may have provided a deterrent against Russian aggression in the first place. Perhaps. The third aircraft type given up by the Ukrainians was the one I've just mentioned as part of the gas debt relief deal, the Tupolev Tu-95, known to NATO as the Bear Bomber. A large, four-engine, turboprop-powered strategic bomber and missile platform. The Bear entered Soviet service way back in 1956 and is one of the oldest aircraft still serving with any air force in the world. Russia keeps the type in service as a long-range reconnaissance aircraft, often loitering around the edges of British airspace and the airspaces of other NATO nations. But it has seen action in Syria, launching cruise missiles from long range. Russia currently has 55 in service. With a crew of 6 to 7, it has a maximum speed of 925 kilometers an hour or 575 miles per hour and a cruising range of 15,000 kilometers or 9,300 miles and can carry a very large amount of bombs and missiles, including eight cruise missiles on wing pylons. Ukraine had between 23 and 29 Bear bombers. The three best Tu-95Ms and 589 KH-55 cruise missiles went, as I noted, to Russia in the 1999 Blackjack bomber deal. The remainder, save for one museum preserved aircraft, were all scrapped. Again, though dated, the Bear still has a role to play in modern warfare, and together with the backfires and blackjacks, Ukraine gave up a considerable strategic bomber capability. The fact that Russia was keen to acquire Ukrainian aircraft and keep squadrons of each type in service in 2022 is proof enough of these old aircraft still being useful and potent today. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton.
You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.